The reason I'm giving this talk is um, deep learning or machine learning in general is uh, very, very hot field as you can read every day. And also there is a lot of scope for uh, astrophysics, um, applying deep learning techniques in astrophysics. Uh, the reason, one of the main reasons I was talking with some students and I told that the data is becoming so massive that um, the human examination of data has become uh, almost impossible. So that's why I want to attract you to this area. I'm not an astrophysicist, but I am a computer scientist, but I have interests or I'm curious about. Just act as soon as so this is the basically the outline of the talk uh, i'll try to explain to you in a very intuitive way how deep learning works and what is deep learning and uh, give you some basic understanding how uh, it is um, the models are built and how they work. And I'll talk about only two of the most basic deep learning models, uh, multilayer perceptron, which is the ordinary neural network, and uh, a model called convolutional neural network, which was uh, very popular, which is very popular for image recognition. And I'll give you some examples, hopefully four examples. Not necessarily those examples are the most important work or anything like that, but to highlight how such simple techniques uh, can also be used to do useful things in astrophysics. So, um, okay. So yeah, as you can see in this picture here uh, that uh, deep learning uh, these days, deep learning has become synonymous with artificial intelligence, which is not really the case. Artificial intelligence is a much bigger area and even machine learning is a much bigger area compared to deep learning. So deep learning is a part of machine learning and uh, the science behind deep learning, it was not invented just few years ago, not at all. The science behind deep learning was known for quite some time now, maybe 30 years or even longer, but the recent surge is due to improvements Uh, due to improvements in hardware, in particular GPUs, the graphics processing units that are used for playing games on computers, they have been customized to do deep learning. So that's the reason. So uh, I guess all of you have uh, here written computer programs and basically in a computer program, whatever language you write it, you uh, have some data and you code some rules to process that data. For example, conditional statements, uh, functions, and uh, so on. And you get some answers. Now, that is the classical way of doing computing. In deep learning, what happens is you don't know the rules. Uh, why is that case? Because, uh, for example, suppose you have 1 million images of cats and dogs, and you want to, uh, given an image, you want to write a program that will say it is definitely a cat or definitely a dog. Now, it's very hard to write conditional statements if there is a whisker and the round, the face is round, etc., to do that sort of thing. So in deep learning or machine learning, what happens is we give the data and we give the answers. What does that mean is I give the machine a picture of a cat and I tell it that it is a cat. And not only one picture, but maybe half a million pictures of cats until each one of them is a cat. Similarly, 
half a million other fixtures for dogs. And then the machine devises the rules. That means internally, the machine figures out some rules to differentiate between a cat and a dog. And uh, so what the rules are not really output, but the rules are then used for classifying unknown or unseen pictures of cats and dogs that are not uh, given as examples. So here, here is an example, very simple example uh, of how machine learning works. Uh, in particular, how such classification, the cats and dogs example I told you is a classification problem. That means we'll give you a picture and you have to tell whether cat or dog. So suppose uh, you have a simple two-dimensional Euclidean plane which is populated with some white circles and some black circles, and uh, nothing more is told to you. That means you are given, I'm, I have shown here maybe 20 of them, but you are given 1 million of them, and nothing else is given to you. Now, can you figure out a rule that will help us, given a circle, whether it is a black or a uh, white circle? So it, as you can see, looking at it, nothing is uh, very clear, but if you rotate the coordinate axis, you can neatly separate out the black dots, black circles from the white circles. And uh, that is, again, the representation is, um, again, in terms of the normal coordinates. Okay. So uh, in that case, now we have a so-called separating hyperplane or a decision boundary. Now, if you give me a black circle, if it falls to the right of that line, vertical line, I'll tell it is a black circle. And uh, to the left, it is a white circle. So basically, deep learning models, when they do classification, and you'll see most of the time they do classification, also there is another uh, type of problems they solve which is called a regression problem. That means predicting a value. They do this kind of separation. And once the separation is done through a linear transformation here, but in general, you cannot have separating planes by using linear transformations. So deep learning models do nonlinear transform, nonlinear separation or nonlinear separation boundaries. An example is that one there. Uh, as you can see, there is no way of doing a simple transformation to find a separating uh, line. So, but on the other hand, you can do a jagged line to do the separation. Now, the model doesn't um, really output this jagged line. Uh, it somehow internalized that jagged line. And then when you are using the model, you give a circle it checks whether it is to the right or left of the jagged line. So in gist, yeah. Yeah, the question is that when you're giving this black circle and uh, white you're telling the story. This How is, the story? Uh, I, I just say machine learning models are incredibly stupid. So for example, I give the coordinates of the circle and I see I say B for black. And coordinate of another, I say W for white. That's enough. So, so give the coordinate in some space. Yeah. Some in this case Euclidean space. And I give so-called label, whether it is a black or white. So this is the very basic neural network. And as you can see, uh, this is called a fully connected neural network or a multi-layer perceptron. As you can see, the purple uh, circles to the left, they are the input and the uh, yellow ones to the right are the output. So assume that uh, we are uh, using this model for uh, separating or distinguishing between cats, dogs, and cows. So you can think of this as an electric circuit where uh, given a picture of a dog at the x1, x2, x3, x4, actually the number of inputs will be much more because uh, the picture has many more pixels. So if you give the picture to the input, then uh, the circuit will kind of connect this to Y1. 
Y1 is the dog output, Y2 is the cat output, and Y3 is the cow output. So the training phase, when you are showing examples to the model, basically establishes those connections. And how do the connections look like? Uh, we generally call it firing of a neuron. That means if there are two inputs to a neuron and uh, those two inputs have higher values. So uh, for example, here, uh, this, uh, this neuron, let us assume that there are two inputs, actually all of them are inputs. And if these have some kind of higher values, then this will fire. That means the connection will established and so on. And for dog, there will be a unique connection to the Y1 output for cat. It will be a unique connection to the Y2 output and so on. So the question is, how do we do this? How do we establish this circuit so that I can do classification? Okay, here is some other examples. Uh, this is uh, if you are, uh, if you have learned, uh, I'm sure you have learned a new computer language like C or Python, or this is the hello world of machine learning. It is called the handwritten digit classification. That means there is a huge data set of handwritten digits, zero to nine, and uh, you train a machine learning model and then you test it by giving an unknown separate data set, uh, the digit four, and the four will light up. So here is the view. There are 10 outputs uh, for this one and the four will light up because of the connections. And actually what happens is basically this is a fully connected network or multi-level, multi-layer perceptron that kind of behaves like a circuit and eventually reaches this core. So this is the neural network view, oh, sorry. Oh. I didn't do anything, right? <laughs> uh, see. 